Can he be so lucky and hit a heart right here for the flush? No, not to be. Four clubs comes off. So McLean feeling pretty good about that card. This time making a healthier bet, 580,000. Dan O'Brien is not folding his hand rapidly though here, Vince, but he finally lays it down. Yeah. What was he thinking after that flop? He got involved and he loses a pretty big one. Had his opponent not at his king, chances are he to check the turn card. Then I have no doubt Dan would have bet and might have won that pot, so. Fold to shove? Nope. Didn't think so. <laughs> Well, the Annies are going up to 5,000 blinds, 20 and 40,000. And to the next hand we go, Dan O'Brien. This time, look who's got the aces. Big Dan. And he raises, makes it 95,000 to go. Andy Seth behind him with the queen jack. You we're going to make a play in the last pot. That didn't work out. The very next hand, you pick up two aces. How much did you start the hand with? You got to um, love it. About a million, 1.05 maybe. He's got a million left. He's got two aces, and he's just praying this guy comes over the top of him. Just makes the call. Incredibly, Vince, we started this final table with three guys in their 40s and three guys in their 20s. The guys remaining are the three guys in their 20s. So youth prevailing once again on the World Poker Tour. Andy making the call here. McLean folding out of the big blind. So here we go. What a flop for Andy. He's flopped three queens. This could spell doom for Dan O'Brien here. Pretty unbelievable. Well, Andy checks. And Dan's going to check. Good check behind him. Oh, that's incredible to me. Turn card, a four of spades. Now well, Andy is now reaching for chips. And he is betting 165,000 here. Well, it's amazing that Dan suspects it looks like that the guy's got a queen in his hand for some reason. Wow, he's just calling. With two aces, Vance, incredible. It is. Two diamonds, two spades on the board. Down to the river we go. Seven of spades helps neither player. And it puts three spades on the board here, which is why I would have raised on the turn with the two aces, just in case your opponent has two spades in his hand. It's back door to flush, and now you're sick. It's 220,000. Call. It's been called by Dan. And he mucks the two aces. But Vance. Pretty sick. Incredibly, he didn't go broke on that hand like he well could have. He checked on the flop, checked on the turn, and made a crying call on the river. Really wish you would have bet more, bro. Ah, man. But Andy Seth. Nice value about that. Running good, as we say, flopping three queens to take down that pot. Oh, wow. You'll see what I had that time. That is pretty disgusting. Monster hand. Is Honestly, like, that would have been the sickest thing ever. I almost folded on the turn, I swear to God. I'm trying to, what, what did you have? That, that was so sick. Go ahead, Dan, say it. You'll see. Is it, will it change that much if you tell me what you had? I really, like, I really almost folded yeah. the turn. Like, I, you can't fold the turn there, I guess. But I, almost, like, but I thought about it. God, 210, what are you doing? Put a real bet out there. I really would have folded. I, mean, I think the guy's lucky to be alive. Yeah. All right, Andy, he raises to 135,000 to go with a king queen. But our chip leader, McLean, with a pair of sevens. Clane's in the small blind, contemplating what to do with two sevens. Call. He's going to make the call. Now it's on Dan, who's a little stunned after those aces getting picked off. He has Jack Deuce of Diamonds. Oh, look at this, Vince. He's going all in. Welcome, Tommy Tilt. How much? Well, he's making what we call a squeeze play. How much That's where one guy raises, another guy calls. Can I get the total? Without bringing in you come over the top raising, thinking if the first guy goes out, the second guy is going to fold as well, and you win the pot. He has pushed it in. Maybe a little frustration from the last hand. Well, and he's got a man sitting behind him, so he throws his hand away. Now, if you're sitting in McLean's seat, what do you do with two sevens? You know, chances are your opponent didn't pick up a pair, because that only happens one time every 16, 17 deals. I call. He's made the call with the two sevens. Dan O'Brien is sick right now. But it's not over. So Dan, the former day trader, has his stock dropping very fast. <laughs> Needs to get lucky in the next five cards. Otherwise, back to Wall Street. Well, the Air Force man out in front with the two walking sticks. They stand up. Dan O'Brien will be walking out of here. Flop comes up 5-5-3. Five, five, no help for Dan. So Dan needs to catch two running diamonds, two running cards to make a straight or a jack to take the lead. A tennis spade comes off. 
We are down to the river card. Dan O'Brien must catch a jack on the river. Otherwise, he'll be out in third place. Can he pick off a miracle here? Eight of spade comes off. So the poker pro now living in Las Vegas, Dan O'Brien, going to retire tonight in third place. He played wonderful this tournament. I obviously ran like God, you know. That uh, was a big effort, great instincts by this young pro. Going to pick up 292,000. He's disgusted. But we are down to two players. Heads up action about to begin. Well, you know what that means, Vance. That means they break out the cash when we're down to heads up play. And there you see him putting it on the table. It does look pretty cool. That's a lot of cash. Winner gonna take home close to 900,000 with it, the beautiful WPT bracelet. There's the cash, the trophy, and that coveted WPT bracelet. That means just one thing. We're just minutes away from the start of Heads Up Action. All right, don't miss the conclusion of the exciting Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament. We're coming right back. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, where Heads Up Action is about to start here at the final table of the Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament. And Mike, the cash, the title, and that beautiful WPT Tiffany bracelet all on the line. Who will be the last man standing at the Bay 101? I think Andy's chances of taking down this tournament are really well. He is really strong fundamentally. He knows the math, and he has a really good feel for his game and what to expect out of him. So you know, I think Andy's a huge favorite to win this. There you see for us, Jock has got confidence in his man, Andy Seth. But Vince, McLean Carr's got 4.8 million. Andy Seth starting with 1.7 million, but the guy who's the current leader for the WPT Player of the Year thinks his former roommate, Andy Seth, is the favorite. I'd have to disagree with that. Well, here's the first hand, ace nine for McLean. He's raised it to 120 to go. Andy now looking down at an ace seven. Two solid hands here on hand number one of the heads up action. He's going to re raise. Yeah, he makes it 3.30 to go. Mullen. And quickly, McLean goes all in. Oh, boy. And Andy goes all up, trying to figure out what to do now. Does he want to put all his money in with this hand? He's up against it. McLean has ace nine. He has ace seven. You could only phone a friend right now, and that'd be the guy you'd call right there, Faraz Jaka, the guy who's currently leading the point standings for WPT Player of the Year. And he says tournament life on the line, perhaps, if he makes this call. Only 23 years old. Can he make the right decision in this moment? A fold. Well, Andy's going to lay it down. So McLean extends his chip lead. We heard Faraz Jaka say what math knowledge and how fundamentally sound Andy Seth was. Well, all I know is this. McLean majored in operations research, which is applied mathematics from the Air Force Academy. My guess is he's pretty good at math himself. <laughs> I bet. Okay, to the next hand we go. Andy this time with a queen three. And he's just going to call. And well, limps in and calls, and McLean said, okay, let's have a flop. McLean with seven five. Oh, and it's come eight seven five with two spades. <laughs> oh, well, McLean checks. McLean with sevens and fives. Andy with nothing. Well, Andy's bet it. You're going to see a check raise here, that's for sure. I'm all in. And a quick over the top all in by McLean. He's going to take down the pot. You just can't just call there in case your opponent's got some type of straight draw or a flush draw. You got to make him pay for it. So McLean extends his chip lead. And Vince, it's hard not to like a guy who went to one of the service academies. He, of course, went to the Air Force Academy. But all those people dedicate four years of their lives to serve in the armed forces. You got to respect them. He's getting a little payoff now, perhaps because he is pummeling his opponent, Andy Seth. But this time, McLean gives up his hand. It's really quiet in here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. All right, to the next hand we go. This time. All in. Andy with just Jack Nine of Diamonds says all in. I call. Well, he's been called by the Ace Four Diamonds of McLean. So Andy says tournament life on the line, and he's up against it. McLean out in front with the ace high. If his hand stands up, he'll be our champion. Andy Seth going to have to get lucky to double up to stay alive here. Let's see if he can do it. Did the young player get impatient and just push it too early? No, oh. maybe not. It's come jack nine four. So Andy Seth takes the lead with two jacks here. McLean looking for an ace or a four. Still two cards. Andy just stumbling around with jack nine. Gets lucky on that flop, but it's not over. We're going to the turn. 
Well, a six comes on the turn, so we're down to the river. Andy Seth will double up unless an Acer 4 comes out there. If that happens, McLean Carr will be our champion, but no. Oh, he's he's double up. Up. He's trust me, I'm everything. Oh, unbelievable. Three of diamonds on the river. So the match continues, Vance. Nice hand, Andy. Andy Seth lives on. Perfect battle from the Bay 101. Stay with us. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. Tonight's episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by PlayWPT.com. Welcome back to the Bay 101 Shooting Star here on the World Poker Tour. The heads-up action's continuing, and the Andes are at 10,000. Lines are going up to 50 and 100,000. The match gets closer as Andy Seth just doubled up a moment ago. Let's see if he can keep the momentum going. The Air Force man, McLean Carr, with about 3.8 million. Takes a look at his hand. He has just an 8-6 of clubs. 200. He's going to raise on the button. The minimum raise makes it 200,000. And to young Andy. He's got queen 10. And he's going to make the call, wants to see a flop. And here comes that flop. And what a flop for Andy. He has flopped the stone cold nuts, the best hand possible, a king high straight. Absolute cinch at this morning, and he's going to dig the hole, put the branches and twigs over it, wait for the sucker to fall in. Well, McLean does not make the continuation bet, and wisely so. Now a six comes off, so McLean makes a pair of sixes, but Andy, of course, with the best hand possible. Nothing can beat him from here. And Vince, if I was him, I would check again. Yeah, keep throwing that rope. He is reaching for chips, though. Yeah, he's going a different way. He's going to bet it. Yep, he's betting 285,000. I fold. McLean, who even though he made two sixes, lays his hand down. Hand, Andy. And right now, if you're Andy Seth, you're looking for one of those barf bags to give you in the plane because you're <laughs> sick your opponent didn't make a bet there. <laughs> You really are. You're saying, I meant check. Did I say bet? I didn't really mean that, of course. All right, back to this hand we go. Andy Seth now looking at a pair of fours. Well, any pair and heads up hold them is a big hand. Here, Andy looks down at two fours. He's going to raise it. Makes it 210,000 to go. But buckle up because McLean has a pair of eights. When you play hold'em, you only get a pair once out of every 17 deals. So it's a 16 to one shot, and yet both of them have got pairs here. It spell trouble as McLean is re-raised right here. Yeah, makes it 585 to go. Mullen. And there you hear it. So he moves all in. I call. And he's been called. Well, tough luck for Andy here. His opponent's got an over pair instead of a race situation. And McLean Carr is over an 80% favorite to win this pot and take this title right here. McLean on his second WPT event, got this tournament to a $1,200 satellite, and now he is just cards away. Oh, we, got, we still got cards, so we'll Becoming see, a we'll WPT see. champion and a very rich guy. Well, there's his girlfriend, poker player herself, Maria Ho. Right now, she's hoping the 2 H just stand up. They're a big favorite to do so. I mean, I feel, I feel real good. I feel real good. Here comes the flop. King 10-3. So far, so good for the Air Force man. Back door is, back door is open. Claims two eights out in front. Andy Seth is going to have to catch a four to win this pot, or two running spades would do it. Well, it's an ace of clubs. No luck for Andy. He is almost down and out. McLean one card away from a championship. Andy must catch a two-outer, as we say. Must catch a four in the river. Otherwise, he'll be our runner-up. Well, it's an ace. So that's going to do it. The graduate of the Air Force Academy, McLean Carr, is our champion. Complete celebration for McLean Carr. He played well. Going to take home close to 900,000. Did I really just win this? <laughs> and I just trapped the guy so good. This war. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got a job to do. Look at he's right there. I'm rich. Well, there you have it. Another champion and another great final table on the WPT. Congratulations to our champion of the Bay 101 Shooting Star Tournament. Wow. For wow. Vince Van Patten and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching. And until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be <laughs> monsters. <laughs> I don't understand what this is for here. <laughs> The World Poker Tour.
The biggest games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. The WPT is a series of international high-stakes poker tournaments that can turn amateur players into millionaires and make professionals into superstars. With millions of dollars on the line, it's time for these six players to live the dream of fame, fortune, and the one thing money can't buy, a WPT title. Tonight on the World Poker Tour. Hi, everyone. Tonight, we're on the banks of the Ohio River at the Hollywood Casino in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, for the inaugural Hollywood Poker Open. I'm Mike Sexton, alongside Vince Van Patten, and this is the WPT. And, Mike, the Hollywood Casino is an absolutely spectacular new stop on the WPT. It exudes all the style and glamour of Hollywood and is becoming one of the hottest poker destinations in the Midwest. Well, Vince, players from around the country stepped into the spotlight and put up 10,000 in cold, hard cash to enter. We are now down to our final six players, all of whom are fighting for big money as well as that distinction to call themselves the inaugural champion of the Hollywood Poker Open. And all six of these players are hoping the spotlight shines down on them. We've got three online pros making their first appearance under the bright lights of a WPT final table. Also, a family man out of Chicago and in his third time at a WPT final table, Chris Bell. Now, this poker pro out of North Carolina is hoping that three times is a charm to take home his first WPT title. But Vance, they're all going to have to get by the chip leader two-time WPT champ Carlos Mortensen, a.k.a. the Matador. He's one of the greatest players in the game, and Carlos has a shot at making history here tonight with a second-place finisher higher. He will overtake Daniel Negrano as the all-time money winner out here on the WPT. And if he can get the W, he will tie the great Dane Gus Hansen with three WPT titles. That's a record Gus has held since season two of the WPT. That's right, but if anyone can do it, the Matador is the man. The cash, the title, and that coveted WPT Tiffany bracelet are all up for grabs tonight. Okay, what are we waiting for? Let's watch the bluffing begin. <laughs> okay, here we go. The final table of the inaugural Hollywood Poker Open about to get underway. We started four days ago with 144 players. We are now down to six. The winner tonight going to take home nearly 400000 That's right. And as you can see, Carlos Mortensen, the chip leader, and he's going to start at 2000 blinds 10 and 20. Cards have been dealt. Action going to the Matador. Carlos Mortensen looks down at a 10-6, says, I've got nada de particular, and he's going to fold. Action over to Ravi Ragaman. Now, there you see a couple of his college buddies. He went to the University of Illinois with these two guys. That's Faraz Jaka and Andy Seth. Both have made WPT final tables this season. Yeah, Ravi, only 23 years old out of Chicago. He's got a king 10. He's going to make it 45,000 to go. Fold by Chris Bell and Frank Callow. Well, action over to the family man, Mike Mustafa. He's a poker pro out of Chicago, Illinois. There's an ace jack off suit, but he's coming right over the top for 125,000. Into the short stack, Jerry Payne. Poker pro out of Dayton, he folds his hand. So it goes back to Ravi. Ravi's got a king 10 off suit, so not the kind of hand you want to play against a re-raise, that's for sure. Ravi lays it down. But a nice over-the-top bet by Mike Mustafa there. The father of four girls taking down that pot. Be impressive. Big hand, Robbie. He'll see, he might see it. I don't know. I'll see the bluff. And it wasn't a bluff, Robbie. Robbie says he's taken home over two million online in poker. That's impressive. Well, it sure is when you're 23 years old. Right back down to the felt. Chris Bell making his third appearance at a final table here on the World Poker Tour. Yeah, Chris, a tough pro out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And he goes out. Frank Callow also out. Yeah, Mike looks down at A7 off, so going to fold this one. And now Jerry Payne from Dayton, Ohio, my hometown. All in. Whoa, the short stack is going all in with his ace three, Mike. Well, he's got the short stack, so he's making a move. And Carlos with the king eight of club in the small blind folding. And Robbie will not play, so right there. And the short stack, Jerry Payne taking down that punt. You have a lot of fun there. <laughs> Only about four people, but I'm from like an hour up the road, so probably a lot of people here. I can say I want at least one hand. <laughs> the action at the Hollywood Poker Open is just getting started. Lots of drama at Hollywood. Don't go away. Having a World Poker Tour in the Midwest is great because I live in Dayton. It's only an hour away, so it's a really easy drive down here. It's one advantage I have over the other five players left at the table. They all have to sleep in a hotel room. I get to sleep in my own bed every night.
win my third WPT title. Well, Barry Greenstein is eliminated. He's not going to win his third WPT title tonight. And Eric Langren, two-time winner on the World Poker Tour, is going to have to wait a while to get that third WPT title. Daniel Negrano is not going to win his third WPT title here tonight. Freddie Deeb in dire straits. He's going to capture that third World Poker Tour title tonight. He's not going to do it. Good luck. To win this would be awesome. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. A lot of great poker moments right there. Well, you're right, Vance. That's the cream of the crop to try to get three WPT titles. Those guys you just saw failed. We'll see if Carlos Mortensen can tie Gus Hansen with three titles by winning tonight. Well, he's the chip leader. Six players remain. We're going back down to the felt. A quick fold by Mike Mustafa. Jerry Payne also folding. Now it's around to Carlos. He's going out as well. Robbie Raghavan, the student out of Chicago, Illinois. And he's got two deuces on the button and folds them. A little surprised at that. Let's see what Chris Bell does. Come on in. He's going to go all in with an ace five here. And Frank Callow is going to fold. So the all in bet by Chris working well there. Thank you. Incidentally, Chris, regardless where he finishes tonight, will become the 120th WPT Poker Made Millionaire. So. Pretty impressive. Uh, he's got a great attitude. He's a great player. He has just missed being a superstar in the game, perhaps, but maybe he can turn that around tonight. All right, back to the table, and look at this young Jerry Payne picking up kings. Jerry's on the short stack right now. All in. But picks up two kings and goes all in with them. Yeah. That's an overbet in my view. Blinds are only 10 and 20,000. Why would you bet over 300,000 here to chase everybody out? Well, he is pushing them away. Everyone folding in a line. Only one to defeat right now would be Mike Mustafa, but he's got a pretty good ace nine. And I'll tell you, I don't blame for hesitating here because when a guy goes all in like that. Yeah, about 300 now. Generally, you put him on a small pair or like an ace and a baby card. Very rare do people bet that much money with two kings right up front. You want action. You want to encourage action. You don't want to discourage it. But Mike does go out. You might have had your ace 10. You had what? Ace 10. Terrible fold. And now we're going to talk to professional Thanks poker player Brian Devonshire. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely a difference between the live and online players. Uh, the, the whole approach that they take to the game is completely different. The, the online players are taking it from a scientific standpoint. The live players are taking it from a psychological standpoint. The online players, they're technicians of the game. They're very skilled at the fundamental play and the mathematics of the game, but they're not skilled at the at the psychology and the live tells and the this and that. And Carlos is a master of live players and live tells and reading hands in specific situations. Like, it doesn't matter, like, the overall probability of a given situation. It matters, like, what the hell's going on in that situation right now. And Carlos played a hand on the way to this final table where he picked a guy's bluff off with a pair of jacks on an ace-queen XXX board. And, you know, and... There was something that he did there that I don't know what he did, but he did it, and he did it well. Well, I think Brian makes some good points there that the great online players are mathematical whizzes, whereas the great live game players are better at reading people and opponents. Well, don't tell that to the great players like Jonathan Little, Faraz Jaka, also known as the toilet, <laughs> or hippie <laughs> Prahlad Friedman, all great online players, but also have great people instincts as well. But we will get back down to the game here. Well, here Mike Mustafa picks up an ace-queen. 50. He's going to raise it. Comes in for 50,000. Into Adam Sandler. I mean, Jerry Payne, who has a 4 5 off suit. And he mucks that. Well, Carlos in the small blind now looks down at a Queen Jack. Carlos is what's known as a defender. He doesn't like to give up his blinds easily. 150. And he's coming right over the top. Forget about calling. He is re raising here. And he's dominated, as you can see. So. Could spell trouble. Yep, Robbie going away and back on Mustafa. Oh. Well, Mustafa just makes the call, doesn't come back over the top. So let's see the flop. Now flop comes king eight six. No help to either player. Now Carlos is going to make the continuation bet, and by doing so, he's going to cause great problems for Mike Mustafa here. It's 140,000. He sticks out there, and now Mustafa, hitting none of that flop, has a decision to make. You just wonder if he didn't re-raise before the flop because it's the chip leader or because it's Carlos Mortensen. But either way, 
He's going to have a problem continuing with this hand as the king h6 flop comes out there. Here's Carlos's girlfriend, Pastora, because he lost the lead in this hand and allowed Carlos to take it. Carlos is going to win the pot by three, making Carlos. the continuation. One three. Oh, yeah, Carlos that's one how three, it's Carlos. done. We the end, Carlos. Three. Oh, boy. One three? I saw you. You have three. I just put it back. No way. Well, the Matador could have got gored. Nice hand, Mr. Martin. Instead, Bluff me, huh? he waves the cape beautifully. Six players remain at the Hollywood Poker Open. We're coming back with more action in just a moment here on the World Poker Tour. One of the best players in the world today, Chris Bell. I remember the first couple of times I got here, like I really wanted to win a title. Well, the bell has finally been cracked. This wasn't meant to be for him to capture his first WPT title tonight. At this point in my life, I kind of keep count with money. If they paid more for second, I'd try to get second. But if they paid more for first, I'm going to try to get first. From St. Paul, North Carolina, Chris Bell. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. And Mike, is it just me, or is Chris Bell's hillbilly accent getting stronger and stronger <laughs> the more he's away from us? Ah, uh, well, I love that line. If they paid more for second place, I'd try to get second. In truth, Vince, it really is all about the money out here. <laughs> all right, welcome back. Carlos Mortensen, our chip leader. Down to the felt we go. Frank Callow out of Liverpool, New York, folding. Mike Mustafa also out. Round to Jerry Payne. He looks at the 10 fighter clubs. He's going to fold. Yep. And here's the Matador. Now our chip leader looks down at Ace Jack on the button. 45. And he's going to raise it to 45,000. Into Ravi, the young 23 year old online player, quickly mucks. Well, he folds an Ace Do suit, Vince. But Chris Bell's going to stick around. And he's got those suited connectors you like to see flops with. And here comes a flop. Queen 9 3. Chris out in front now with the 2 9. And he got a piece of it, and he's going to check. And look at this, Carlos checks right behind him. Just has an uncanny sense of feeling when he's beat, and that's exactly the case right here. Yeah, he is beat, and now Chris finally having to bet. And he's betting 35,000, a very small bet, into a pot that's got 112,000 in it, but just letting Carlos know I've got a little something. Chris darting the eyes over to the Matador. I know you don't have 8-3. 8-3 would be good right now, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, indeed it would. But I know you don't have that. Good assumption there. Yeah, these two guys are actually good friends off the table, but... All right. Yeah. Carlos is going to lay it down, and here's yeah, a case sure where Carlos right. didn't make a continuation bet. So did nine. So did nine. Or the eight. Nice. Right? Just felt like he might have got out flopped there, and that was nice. the case. Now, what's amazing is Carlos said, sure show nice. me the nine. You know, if I asked someone shot. to show me a nine when they didn't have to show it, they never do it. How does he do that? <laughs> well, he's the only player in the world that's won the main event of the World Series of Poker and the main event on the World Poker Tour. So when you have that kind of status, you get respect. People <laughs> do what you ask them to. Oh, evidently. All right, back to the felt we go. Jerry Payne, a quick fold. And Carlos going to take a breather, goes out. Ravi also folding. Now back to Chris Bell. Picks up a nice hand here. Got two tens. He's going to raise it. Makes it 60,000 to go. Into Frank Callow. And the 22-year-old poker pro out of New York folds. They call him Frank the Tank, by the way. Now well, Mike Mustafa is going to make the call here out of the big blind with the King Jack. So here comes a flop. Ace, ace, six. Chris still out in front with the two tens. Action on Mike. He's going to check. Now, Chris, will he make the continuation bet? No, he checks there. Kind of surprising. When a king comes off, Mike has the lead now with aces and kings. Action is on him. And he is now going to bet 65,000. Well, to compound Chris's problems. Oh, boy. He not only didn't bet on the flop, he's now paying off the guy when his hand is beat. Okay, river card. Can Chris get lucky? No, it just gets worse. Now well, the board pairs king, so Mike has kings full, but leery that Chris might have been slow playing three aces on the flop, so he checks, and Chris Bell can only beat now something like two sevens or two eights, so he checks also, and he is not going to like the way he played this hand. I promise you that. You might say the bell cracked here a little, Vince. Chris Bell not taking that one. Mustafa taking the pot. 
Chris, you look like you got sick of that rhythm. Well, he who hesitates, lose big pots, as you can see. Well, there you see the look on Chris Bell's face. It says it all. He knows he misplayed this hand. All right, six players remain here at the Hollywood Poker Open. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Tonight's episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by PlayWPT.com. I went to school at University of Illinois in Champaign, and there's tons of other players from that area, too. Andy Seth, he just finished runner-up in the Bay 101 in San Jose. And then the legend, obviously, Faraz Jaka. He FT'd the Bellagio Cup and then the Five Diamonds.